Welcome to the art project. Welcome to my art class. Uh, we are going to do some graffiti style lettering and other designs and decorations to go on our portfolio. Um, here is one that I've done in my sketchbook. I expect you to do yours if you're in my class in your sketchbook. Um, you can fill a page like this or you can do uh, save paper by doing half the page and then doing another half of the page. So I'm going to take you through this uh, step by step and I've already started one over here but I'm going to forego this one in order to show you one here. I'm going to make it large so you can see it on the video screen. Uh, you're going to want to start out by deciding where your letters are going. So for example, uh, I know I'm doing the, the name Chad, which is four letters, two on the left, two on the right. So if I find the middle of this paper, I can center my name. If I start over here and I start doing a C and an H and an A and a D, I got all this paper over here that I intended to fill up but didn't. So by finding the center of my paper, I can find out where my name should go. I'm then going to draw what I call the bones of the letter which is basically just the kind of regular print letters that your um, first grade teacher taught you to draw. Um, first letter on this side is an H, first letter on this side is an A, first letter, uh, next letter is a D, and over here a C. That helps me to kind of center it on the paper uh, although it doesn't look 100% center, it, it's not half bad. I can then erase this line if I don't need it. I can scoot my H over. As long as you draw light, you can always correct things. So always draw light until you get it right. That's kind of my motto. I'm sure a lot of art teachers say the same thing. Draw light until you get it right. Now, at this point, I can start to either do block letters or I can start to add um, some, some serifs. Serifs are like the little things on the ends of letters that make them um, a little bit fancier. And I can add those before I start doing the block letters. Uh, these aren't the kind of serifs that I want. I want, I'm, I'm doing this um, graffiti style, so I'm going to try and get a little bit more interesting than this. I think I'm going to do like an arrow over here. I love graffiti that has arrows in it. I'm also going to do a kind of a pointy thing right here. Um, and then I'm also going to add a pointy thing over here. These are just things that came to me as I was starting to do this. I have not practiced, well, I've practiced this, but I have not like decided exactly what I'm going to do. I'm making this up as I go along. So I thought, hey, this is round here and this is round here. Why don't I do something pointy here and something pointy here? Um, also, I want to add more arrows. So the end of my C has got an arrow here. I'm going to put a, uh, another arrow maybe right here on this A. and maybe right here on this H. Okay, now supposing this is exactly what I want to keep, I'm now going to do what I call the skin. If this is the bones, what I'm about to do is the skin. The skin is sort of an outline around <clears throat> the structure. The skin is the uh, stuff around the bones. Now look, I, I wanted like starting out here, I wanted to just go right there, but if I go there and then I try to go this way, I'm gonna run into my arrow. So I need to go out a little bit further and down. Um, I'm gonna just do the C first, even though I'm having to draw on top of my H, that's okay. <clears throat> the other side of my arrow, the skin inside here. I'm just gonna cap this off right here normal for now. And since I'm trying to make this pointy, do it like that. And there I have my C. Then I'm going to do the H the same way. Here's the 
outline the skin around the H. By the way, you, you probably see a lot of sketching going on here. I want to clarify, as I'm sketching, what I'm doing is I'm drawing one long line and I'm trying to redraw it real quickly to get what I want. The first one I drew was kind of crooked right there and I straightened it out. I am not um, sketching like this. That doesn't do anything for me. That's a bad habit that a lot of kids have. Don't do that, just draw a straight line and add to it like I did that straight line and then it wasn't long enough so I added to it come down here put a little cap on the A going up over and around my arrow all right this is a much larger arrow than this is so I'm going to tweak this a little bit Make it go up. Make this arrow as prominent as that arrow. Remember, anything you don't like, you can fix as long as you've got it in pencil. It's better to draw in long, fluid strokes like this than to do the little lines like this. This is bad. Always try and draw in long, fluid strokes. Now, that's looking pretty sharp. I'm pretty excited about this. Don't forget the middle of my A, which goes right here. Remember, this is, lines up with this, and this part lines up with that. Okay, now, um, I could do a whole lot more to this, including a race the inside here but to kind of move this along a little bit I'm going to show you an easier way to do this and you don't want to do this until you know that you've got it the way you want it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to trace it with a sharpie pen now by doing this I'm setting in stone what I've got here I'm making it permanent but I'm only going to trace the stuff that I know I want which is Uh, the outside lines, or what I called a minute ago, I called it the skin. I kind of wish that I had not started tracing this yet because I don't like this arrow, but I've already done it now, so we're going to go with it. Okay, once you have finished, I'm gonna come down here a little bit further, come up here. Once you have finished the outline, you can then take an eraser. So what I want is permanent because I've done it in Sharpie. And now I can erase all the pencil line I don't want without worrying about erasing what I do want makes erasing a whole lot easier. Okay, now, um, obviously I don't wanna stop with this. I want to get crazy with what I have here. I wanna make it just absolutely spectacular. So I'm gonna put a little, um, little 3D on it. I'm gonna make it three dimensional. And to do that, I'm going to just kind of like make these little marks that kind of shoot towards a, a vanishing point down here. You may not know a lot about perspective, but basically perspective is things that are closer to you are big and things that are further away are small. So I'm just gonna swoop, swoop in with this and every corner is gonna get a swoop towards that point right there. And even up here at the top. Now some of them don't show up very well, like this one right here, 
is too really close to that, but that's okay. That's I'm shooting for that little point down there. And so this line already goes towards that point, so I can't do one from that corner. But I can do one from this corner a little bit, and this corner a little bit, and this corner, and this corner towards that point. And I think that's it. Then, in order to show the back of the letters, I'm going to draw the front of the letters all right, so there's one right here. This, this side is that big. I can measure it with my pencil. So I'm gonna make this side that big. And this comes down that much from there. So I'm gonna do the same thing right there. Uh, there's gonna be a piece that goes from there to there. And this, this goes straight up, so I'm gonna make this go straight up. This goes over, so I'm gonna make that go over. This goes down, and it's kind of, this is even with this, so I'm gonna make it even with it right there. Now again, um, in order to make it easier to erase, I can trace it. The only problem with tracing it, I like to save tracing for later, but the only problem with tracing it is once I've traced it, I cannot really do anything in front of it. I cannot erase it. So. If I decide that I want to do some smoke and the smoke is supposed to go in front of it, too bad. It's permanent now. Unless, of course, the smoke is darker in color than the um, black Sharpie. Or whatever you put in front of it is darker than the black Sharpie. So, moral of the story is, don't do like I'm doing right now. Don't trace it in Sharpie until you are sure that that's what you want to keep. The only reason I'm doing it right now is basically so you can see on the video what I have so far. And I know the Sharpie is easier to see than the pencil. I missed this part right here. Okay, so I've got what I think are some pretty cool looking graffiti letters. Um, I'm going to keep adding to them. Another thing that a lot of graffiti artists add is an outline. I'm going to go around this whole thing with, and in fact, I'm going to make it a thicker outline down here. and thinner on the top. You see how this is thinner than this? So, just to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm always trying to as I'm doing this, I'm always trying to look and see if there's something that I can do that's different than the way I've done it before. Keep thinking like that. That's how you come up with new stuff. I, I'm sure somebody else has already thought about making um, the outline thinner on the top and thicker on the bottom or vice versa. Um, I just thought of it myself, so I thought I'd try it out. I'm going to make this a little bit more. Um, I'm also going to decorate the inside, and I'm going to add some outlines around the inside. Uh, 
By the way, I want you to know I am not a professional graffiti artist by any means. I don't do this a lot. I just kind of know enough about art to be able to draw stuff like this. There are graffiti artists that are way more amazing than what I'm doing. What I'm doing right here is just like kind of making a design down here that's kind of geometric looking. That way I can put two colors on the front. Like I might do this blue and this red or something like that. And you can do anything you want to right here. Uh, just for example, I've made it kind of blocky, almost like a city skyline right here, right? But you don't have to do that. Think outside the box, do something else. Maybe round it off. Maybe, uh, maybe one big round part, all right? I like that too. But since I've already done these, um, since I've already done these little building pieces, I'm going to keep going with that. All right, so now I've got a little design on the inside. I can also add design like at the very top. I'm going to do something similar, just a little bit. Maybe make this one kind of look like paint drips. Or paint running. This might be too much. And I'll know when I get it um, drawn in. But like I said, as long as I don't do it in Sharpie, I can always erase it. And also keep in mind that this is the sketchbook version. This is not even not even the uh, the final drawing. So even if I do it in Sharpie, I can change it on the final. Okay. Um, now also think about what you want to do in the back. Um, you could do uh, flames. You could do just kind of um, polka dots. In fact, if you have a good circle template or um, something like that, you could use the circle template to do this. going to do a couple of these circles you can do some more down here my flames and do some over here Um, maybe do some random ones floating around. Even going off the page.
Okay, it looks a whole lot like bubbles. Originally, my intention was like, like when you take spray paint and you just go like that. Um, but I've got bubbles. That's okay. We'll go with that. Um, you might look at it and say, okay, you can't possibly get anything else on there. But that's not true. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna find the middle here, which is about right. About right there, and I'm gonna put my put my device on there, and I'm gonna do a starburst pattern out like this. All right, so I've gone almost all the way around this thing, making this uh, starburst. And again, you might say you don't have room for anything else, but as long as you have not done it permanently in Sharpie, you can always erase whatever you need to erase and you can redo whatever you need to redo. And it will, you know, you can just keep adding to it uh, I could put clouds in the front. I could do paint dripping off of this. I could do clouds floating by in front of it. I could do um, hands coming up over, you know, maybe right here, uh, like a hand grabbing hold of the top of that thing right there. These are the fingers. And, uh, you know, um, I know that's, that's that would look really cool, but I also need a face or something to go with it. Maybe have a face right here. All right, so I know this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit, and I'm going to color in, I mean, not color in, I'm going to trace all these things that I want to keep. So watch, it's going to change in just a second. All right, so I got some stuff traced, and I want to erase these because I don't really like those too much. I just wanted you to see you could keep adding to it, but you can do whatever you want. Leave them off, put them on, whatever. All right, so I've outlined all of this in Sharpie. This is still in pencil, and I decided to leave it in pencil because it'll help me to contrast the outside with the inside. The inside being all traced in Sharpie and black, and the outside is going to be colored, but no outlines. And so they'll kind of differentiate the background from the letters. Um, I'm not going to do all this on camera. Uh, but I just want you to kind of see what it is that I'm doing. I'm using some watercolor markers, and I'm going to use uh, a paintbrush and some water to um, make it bleed and make it give it some texture and fade and that sort of thing. So let me demonstrate that. All right, so I'm going to do my background, uh, the rays in uh, orange and yellow. So I'm going to start with the orange. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a little bit of marker right here. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to take a paintbrush with some water on it. And I'm going to work it into that watercolor. And just kind of drag it out. So it's going to fade. And it's going to be a little watery. Of course, the water will dry out. All right. Do the same thing again right here. I'm just going to sort of outline these circles. And I'm going to take a wet paintbrush and just drag some of that watercolor out. If it doesn't do exactly what you want, give it a second to soften that watercolor, and then it will. It has a nice little effect.
meant to erase the pencil a little bit so it wasn't quite as dark. Watercolor marker, and then just some straight water. If your design is big enough, like these rays are, this is not too hard to do. But if you have really small details like this almost, <clears throat> this gets a lot harder. So try and keep your details big. I'm just taking a second to erase these lines and not erase them so you can't see them anymore, just erase them so that they're not so harsh. And I'm trying not to do this around these because this is still wet a little bit, but I'm just doing it on like this side over here. I don't really want to get eraser in my watercolor. It's a good idea to do all your erasing before you start your watercoloring. You can see, or I hope you can see, I can still see these lines well enough to watercolor them in. And I'm going to continue watercoloring. All right, um, I got the orange painted in. Um, I'm going to get some yellow, I think, and do the parts in between. And I'm going to do the circles in red and so on. But this is a 27 minute long video, so I'm gonna stop here. If you wanna see the final product, check out my Instagram, uh, which you can find in the description down below. Um, but anyway, this is the basic idea. Have fun, do some graffiti name, go wild, um, have a party with your letters. Um, don't forget to use the bones, draw the skin, um, or, um, outline everything that you wanna keep erase what you don't, um, and then fill in the color. All right, step one, layout. Step two, decorate. Step three, outline and pen. Step four, color. Easy peasy.